What's up, Internet? You're tuning into a very special episode of the Flip Screen Games podcast where we are here reacting to everything we saw at Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest kickoff 2023. It feels good to be back, Steve. How you doing? I'm good. It feels like, oh, I don't know, an hour ago since I last spoke to you. <laughs> I was, it's funny. I guess I said good to be back as if we hadn't just sat down and recorded something. I meant more, it's good to be back in the G3 season, you know? It is. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be back. It's nice to have the hype around it. It was great to see Summer Game Fest with uh, a live audience for the first time, obviously, the last yeah. uh, three years, I guess. Well, really two years of proper Summer Game Fest have been during COVID times and, and uh, no, no live audiences. So, Good, good to see. Good to see. Yeah, yeah. And I think overall it was a pretty good showing. You know, I think um, the trouble with these events, right, is like, I think, honestly, I can't even remember who it is that says this. I, I feel like it was a Sony exec back in the day who was like, if you walk away from one of these things with three things that you were excited about, then it was a successful showcase, right? And I think, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who would walk away from this without at least one or two really big highlights, which I think is is the bar you want to clear right like i don't know that i would call this like an s rank or an a rank or anything like that but the big announcements were big and were cool and exciting and you know i think yeah it, it felt like it felt like a good showcase and i thought the pacing was good uh for the most part it got very bloated near the end it felt where you got to kind of a a string of I don't want to like talk smack about the games, but like just less exciting titles, some of which looked a little bland, a little familiar, you know, things like that. But I think the heavy hitters, there was some really good stuff here. And I think even when you get past the first couple marquee announcements, there's some deeper cuts that I think are very exciting and interesting as well. Um, that of course we'll talk about more in a minute, but I think for me, like I'd give it a solid B. You know, it it was a. It was I a think good that's joke. a that's a good score. I think I think maybe for me it's like a C plus or B minus. I think I think there was a lot here that was again a criticism we had of last year's was oh there's way too many farming games, there's way too many of these um, sci-fi horror games. This year it felt like there was a lot of fantasy MMO style games, and I was seeing a lot of this that was like padding out the show, and I'm just like. Yeah, I kind of I've got a feel of this and it's not for me and I kind of want to move on to the next thing. And maybe if it is for you and that is your thing, uh, maybe you are excited about it. But I kind of feel like if that's your thing, you're probably really excited about Final Fantasy. You're not necessarily excited about yet another fantasy game from like an EA Originals that I think is just coming out a really poor time. Uh, but I also think there was a lot of stuff we already knew about. And that we've just seen more footage of. And that's always a good thing. But I yeah. think really there was only a, a couple of standout marquee announcements. So we already knew we were going to get more Combat 1 gameplay. It was great to see Alan Wake 2 again. Marvel Spider-Man obviously got a release date. Uh, and, and, and ending out the show with Final Fantasy 7 was, was huge. But there was a lot of stuff here that you know we'd seen before. Like we've seen Party Animals before. We'd seen Baldur's Gate 3 before. We'd seen um you know honkai star star rail is the the fact that it's coming to ps5 is cool but we'd already seen it before uh but there was some there was some good announcements but i think i agree with you b is probably the most i could give this event nice to see that it wasn't padded out with like a music showcase or anything like that that jeff is usually yeah. a fan of doing though nothing nothing that felt like a real waste of time you know like I, I, we talked a little bit a bit about it on our live stream which you can go check out the vada of here on youtube um, where it's kind of like, I feel like the only times where the show really slowed down, unless it was just an announcement that you were not excited about. And like the idea that you're going to like every single thing that they have to show is just unrealistic. Right. Was during the like talking bits, right. Where there was like, here, we're going to sit down and we're going to chat with a developer. We're going to chat with Nicholas Cage for a minute. And it's like, those are the things we complain about when they don't do them. Right. It's like, let the people talk, let yeah. them talk a little bit. So I think if that's like, the only place where you're really losing momentum, that's a pretty good place to be. Um, I still found that so funny, the way they got those people on stage. It looked like they were just being pushed out from the wings and then wasn't sure if they should be on stage. It, and then Jeff's like, welcome to the stage. And they're like, oh, yeah, I am meant to be here. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, you know, live shows are awkward, right? Like, <laughs> it's it's a uh, yeah, it's, it's an art, not a science for sure. I feel like he gets it down at um, the Game Awards, though. You'll come back from a trailer, and they'll already be on stage with him, like ready in that little circle yeah. bit that he's on. Uh, but yeah, this time, like, well, I saw a couple. The Game of times Awards is a lot more creeping around. I think there's a lot more money that goes into the Game Awards too, right? And that's the thing. There's a lot less ads than we usually get at those, right? You know, there's only I think two commercial breaks. Um, yeah. So, a lot shorter than the Game Awards, though, which I very much appreciate because every when we did we did a, a live stream for the Game Awards once, and I could not do it again. Because at the time it is on is ridiculous. We were going until like three o'clock in the morning UK yeah. time. It was so Jeff long. Jeff just eked it out and out and out. And I saw you getting tired. And there's me like falling asleep. I was exhausted when we did that stream. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a big one. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I think with with that, uh, let's jump into the announcements, right? Because I think I think overall solid showcase i i you you see the vision of summer games fest getting clear over time and i think that's what i appreciate about it you know um I yeah think me too it's getting better it's it's very much replaced e3 and i think jeff knows that this is the kind of thing that he always did at uh gamescom it's like that gamescom's open night live yeah very much feels like a similar show that he's doing but it's just his branded thing um, I thought it was strange that he, he's like announced as the the creator of the Game Awards at the beginning of S Summer Game Fest. Like he's the creator of Summer Game Fest. Like he should own that and like make this as a a solid brand as as the Game Awards. I, I think like I he think he needs will something that is like because because he streams it on the on the Game Awards um, YouTube yeah. channel as well. I feel like he needs his own brand. I think like that's he, the thing is I think everything under. I think the Game Awards has been his brand for so long that that's why he does it that way mm -hmm. is like because summer game fest does not have the recognition of e3 even though i think for like folks like us we look at it as the new e3 um my like normie friends are not watching this in the way that they used to tune in for e3 presentations because it's just it's not there yet and i think tacking it to the game awards name and to the the brand recognition that jeff has built up with the game awards over the last you know decade plus he's been doing it right um I, I think I think that's the move, you know, is like gradually get folks acclimated to Summer Game Fest. And, you know, um, eventually maybe he does rebrand that channel to something else, you know, that like is the parent of yeah, both G3. of those events. G3. It should be. G yeah. Should be. yeah, it should be. 100% he should own it. Jeff just, like we said, like, yeah, just, just call it Keely. Just call it Keely TV or something. I'd, I'd I'd be behind it, you know. I know people <laughs> people like to to rag on Jeff because he's a dork, you know. Um, but he does good. Hey, he's always got the best sneakers. Yeah, that's all I can say about Jeff. He's he, he was rocking a a tight pair of sneakers again with his suit. He knows how to do a the sport coat sneakers yeah. combination. That's for sure. We re, we 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 respect Jeff in this house. Uh, so let's let's get into the announcements. I think um. I think the way we'll do it is we'll probably do it the same way we did the Sony thing, where I think we'll lead off with all of the top headlines, and then we'll kind of sift through everything else, because, you know, we, we just did the watch-along. If you want to watch our reactions to every individual announcement in intimate detail, you can go check that out. We did a 30-minute pre-show. Uh, it's a new thing we're trying. If you guys enjoy it, we'll keep doing it, so let us know. Where, where do you want to start, then? I think, I think I'd like to go in reverse order. Let's start with the hypest announcement, which by far was the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth release date trailer. A lot more footage or, or cinematic shown and story shown of that game. It was both too, right? Then, there was there was a significant amount of gameplay as well. It was a pretty a pretty like meaty bit, right? Like we got to see a decent chunk yeah. of like what seems like open world areas, right? Um we saw some new characters, we saw some bosses um you know we got some more but it looks like we got the confirmation that yuffie who was playable in the dlc is getting added to the main crew this this time around which is cool um there was some more kind of like nods to the whole alternate timeline element that was established mm -hmm. in the first one um so yeah there's a there's a lot there um that i think was was really exciting and i mean you know if you are 
like me and many others, right, who really responded to that, the first one, um, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting to, to get another deeper look at it. Um, particularly the, in, the intro of it was rough. Uh, just like all of the, you see, like there was an explosion. I thought you were almost, at, you were almost in tears on the stream. I was like, oh, my friends. friends. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I've never <laughs> played the original. I don't know what happens. You know, like, I don't, I don't you know there was an explosion. Seems like Cloud was away for years. Like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, I feel like Cloud should take some responsibility for that, for just abandoning all his friends and letting them get hurt like that. He yeah, should feel, he should feel bad about that. But yeah, then then there was some like rideable giant yellow chicken things, which Those I know are talk to Chocobo, Steve. Yeah, weird. And it's a talking weird. lion. Oh as soon God. as as soon as that lion opened his mouth, I was I checked out. Dude, you I are was, such was, a poopy was, pants. Uh, like, I, I, I really know, hate I the way you talk about things that you don't have any interest in. Because you like the nerdiest, lamest shit. I know. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, there's a talking animal on this? I don't, I can't take this seriously. I just, I can't. No, I can't. I, oh, well, Get out and, of here. And the store, the nonsense stories, like some ginormous you don't know sword what the story and spike hand that defies you gravity. It's nonsense. Like, just stop. Just stop. Just stop. But I get, but I, but I get this hype announcement and I get the people that are excited about it just i can i really wish i could you could you know, if you the... tried you make no effort I feel like, and then you I feel like things you, i feel like you could if you tried elden ring but you tried it for like 20 minutes and then gave oh up. i tried it for 20 minutes okay i played it longer than any game you've ever claimed to try you did not even be a single one of the bosses in that game i did not one i literally no, beat the you, you i literally streamed beating the first major you boss. did not no you didn't you did not defeat godrick not sh- no, you the guy at the not. bridge. I did that. No, that was just a giant troll thing that you beat. No, was you're just thinking like of a different thing. Around. Go look at the VOD. I did it. Asobi okay. came in and okay. ghosted and helped me, and I played the dumb game. It sucks, okay? This is a good game. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to poop on your parade every time you bring it up. Lose my game of year. Okay, whatever. Fine. Fine. I get it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if, if fair enough. I mean, this looks like it's going to be a ginormous game, and I don't imagine it's moving the plot much. Like, they're still in Midgar by the looks of it. I don't uh, know, because it's, it's like the first game was on, allegedly it's on 10% discs. of the story of the first game, yeah. and it's like, this has a different timeline, so it's like, uh, we might get nowhere. I don't know. They can make 10 of these things. I don't know. I have no concept know, yeah, of how crazy. many we're supposed to get. <laughs> But yeah, so apparently on two discs coming in early 2024, um, PS5 exclusive again. So like a real another coup for for Sony there. Um, I wonder if these are ever ever going to come to any other platform. Uh, I mean, imagine PCs coming at least a year later in the same way that it did for the original Final Fantasy VII remake. It's weird to me that it hasn't come to Xbox because like 15 did. You know, yeah, I, Crisis I, I, Core did as well. I wonder if they just didn't sell well on Xbox or something, or I don't know, like, or maybe Sony really shelled out a ton of money, you know. But that's that's gotta be it. It's gotta be a level of exclusivity because Crisis Core came over to Xbox. I think it came to Game Pass as well. Uh, so I would I would imagine that that Sony paid a decent chunk for exclusivity. We know they did for um, for Final Fantasy 16, right? And the, right, they've already said that. You're not going to see a PC port within within six months. It's not going to happen. I'm very interested to see how that shakes out. I know there's been conversation. Uh, I think Imran Khan was the first one who reported it that the pre-orders for that are like significantly lower than 15, and Square is a little nervous about that. And it's like, well, it's an exclusive on a console that's way less established. So, and it's like I think the timeline of the release in the middle of Tears of the Kingdom and other hype announcements and releases coming later this year. It's also an M-rated game. Like, all those things make the audience slightly smaller than it could have been otherwise. So, like, I felt like that see, that makes sense to me. But, I mean, if it's, like, so low that they're, they're worried about it, I don't know. Maybe that's not great. But, you know, oh, this, they one's got gonna, this one. They got this one around the corner. This one's going to sell. this one's going to pop off, right? So, yeah. no question. So, yeah. Uh, very excited. Very excited about both of them. It's a good time to be a Final Fantasy fan. We're eating right now. Yeah, I mean, you were eating pretty good in this presentation. You were really excited about the Mortal Kombat um, footage that we saw as well. Yeah, let's talk about that next, because that that looked great. I'm very excited about this one. Um, I, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. I kind of fell off 
Um, with 11, 11 is the only one from like the reboot. Like they did a, a soft reboot in nine, and that was like what got me back in in a major way. Not that I, I guess, had really fallen off that much. Um, I had played uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe before that and loved that, you know. Um, I, I messed with Mortal Kombat, right? And 11, I never got around to. I know, according to Ed Boon in this, 11 set up this reboot, right? Where like Liu Kang becomes a fire god and basically creates a new universe. And what we saw here was, I mean, obviously some brutal gameplay and fatalities and all that, but they gave a deeper insight into like what the changes to the lore are. And they're pretty significant, like um, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, right? Who are famously enemies from rival clans in the original series. They're brothers now, they're right? They're brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they're, they, and they're like boys, you know, like they're, they're like a, a duo. Um, Obviously, having, you know, uh, Raiden, who was Liu Kang's mentor, right? He's like a young upstart. He's just getting trained and everything. And Liu Kang is the older god figure. So, like, that's a total subversion of their their traditional relationship. So, it's like, he made a comment about how it's like characters who used to be enemies or friends and, like, traditional dynamics that you know well if you've played for the last, you know, 30 years of Mortal Kombat. Um are all getting upended, yeah. which is really cool. Which is well, that that combined with the new like cameo system where you can team up multiple characters and and that they're all going to play differently together. And you can kind of bring on the cameo um, to come and do like a fatality or like a finishing move or whatever. Well, uh, interestingly really enough, cool. it's not even limited to just that. Like they talked about how um, it's basically like there's a button that you can press to summon them at any time. And they have different combinations based on if it's like for like, say it's Y on your Xbox, right? It's like forward Y, back Y, down Y. So like seemingly they have a bunch of different attacks that you can use to chain in combos. You can use to like interrupt your opponent if they're kicking your ass. like it seems like it could really add an interesting dynamic to the gameplay, you know? Yeah, I think that's going to be... It, I've not seen anything like that, really, in uh, in a fighting game like this, like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, or Tekken. It's, it's kind of, um, uh, like, reminiscent of uh, Marvel vs. Capcom had that, but those characters were playable, right? Like, you'd be switching between them, and you could press the button and get them to come in and do an attack or whatever, but, like... There was a risk to that because if they got hit, they're losing health, whatever. Like this is a very different system than that, even though I guess it's akin to it. It's very cool. It's very different, you know, and across the board, everything is very different. And I mean, the graphics, the the oh, visually stunning, like beautiful. Looks, the background, the environment, you mentioned, yeah, yeah. they look great. Like they're so detailed, you know. Well, and the fact that when you go into the level and there's like that story, like oh, the first one I think we sort of see is in that um in maybe it's the second one in that house and like uh there's like the the infinity pool and the bar and yeah stuff. everything's just so visual and it's just slowly getting destroyed as they're fighting in there and the blood's just going all over the floor and like <laughs> you get the x-ray as like someone's shoving a sword into them and stuff it looks like more combat that people have come to know and love but i'm glad to hear that there's like a, a bunch of changes that's going to keep it fresh and with the mortal kombat one it seems like it's a full reboot and i imagine this is going to set up a bunch of games moving forward yeah i'm guessing this is the new trilogy you know like in the same way that like 9 10 11 was kind of a trilogy that shook up the story i guess this is like this is the next era you know um mm -hmm. and i'm stoked about it like i'm happy to to have an inroad back in because i didn't skip 11 because i wasn't interested in it it was more i think just like a bad timing thing granted this one's timing isn't that much better but it just it looks so good and like us being in the whole fighting game soft renaissance we're in right now, I'm like, I want to get back into a game, and Mortal Kombat's my game, so I'm ready. When's Starfield out, though? That's the big question, right? Because that's the one looming over uh -huh. in September, and that's coming out 6th of September. This comes out two weeks later on the 19th. So, yeah. Yeah, it's... That's, the, that's the problem you've got, right? If you're a big yep. fighting, fighting guy, then you you're going to be picking up more combat one on day one but you know if you're if you're kind of knee deep in starfield at the time mm -hmm. and maybe final fantasy as well on the go yeah it's yeah it's tough it's 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 going to be a game it's going to be a juggle i think i'll be done with final fantasy by then three months later but 
Yeah, never know how big those games are. Yeah, right? It's like I spent a long time with the, with Seven, so we'll see. But very, very cool. Very good showing. And this is one where, like, we knew it was coming, but I didn't expect to see as much as we saw. So I was pleased about that, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you on that. So I guess it's debatable about what the next hypus announcement is. So I'm just going to bring up the one I was most excited about next, which is Sonic Superstars, which looks incredible. That for me is, is my favorite announcement of the show. Uh, obviously, I'm not a fan of fantasy uh, guy because of the yeah. giant yellow chickens. Um, but this one looked phenomenal. The, when it switched from like the retro 2D over to like the new... I guess it kind of looks like the new Super Mario Brothers. It's like the new Super Mario Brothers treatment for Sonic. Yeah. And it feels like they're finally doing that, like, proper 2D version of, of Sonic that we've been wanting for a long time. No, I, I have no idea who's making it. I would imagine it's the Sonic Mania team, right? Uh, <laughs> this, this just looks perfect. I don't, I don't. I don't think Sonic Team is com- is capable of making a game that looks this good. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the folks behind Sonic Plus, Mania. They always shove their logo over everything. Yeah, if you ask me it's to made guess. by Sonic Team, they're like, yeah, this is Sonic Team. Oh my god, and like I love that it's like the old, it's the it's Amy in this like Sonic CD costume. Like it's like it's very old school feel to it, you know? Yeah, I was talking to I was talking to someone and. Um... And he said, is Sonic still friends with Tails? I was like, yeah, and, and Knuckles and Amy. And he was like, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. They couldn't come up with a better name that was on brand other than Amy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't want to call her Hammer Girl, you know? Um, yeah. But I, I, this, I just think it looks so good. Like, it, the multiplayer element of it is interesting, too. Like, I don't know how much... I'll actually do that. Uh, yeah, but... I mean, that's very dependent on... on. I mean, it could be. It could be really fun in the same way that 3D World multiplayer was and, like, really Sonic fun. Adventure 2 was, yeah. was two-player, right? Like, that was, like, a really classic way to play, right? It was, like, oh, you give your friend, the little, you know, the younger sibling, whatever, the second controller, and they play Tails, you know? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think this is going to be one of those games that's probably really fun to play on your own. But it is it is totally playable with multi multiplayer as well, uh, and it just looks phenomenal. It looks like it really captures what was great about two D Sonic, and I feel like it's been a long time since we had that. And it's coming to everything. It's yeah. gonna be really right at home on Nintendo Switch. This is the kind of game I would pick up on Switch. Give someone a Joy-Con when they come over, and let's just here you go. You play as as Tails or Knuckles, and I'm gonna play as Sonic. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this. This one is right up there for me. Like you know if if. If Final Fantasy was my favorite, like, this is tied for it, I would say. Like, I I thought this was such a great-looking game, a really nice surprise, and, like, a game I'm immediately looking forward to now. And, you know... You haven't uh, got long to wait. It's coming out in full. Yeah, I was going to say, did they give us a specific date, or did it just say No, just full. Don't need it then. Uh, I'd wait, maybe. Like, yeah. Give me that game in January or something where it's going to like really pop off and have some room to breathe. But I could see that being a good one for Christmas, though. Like around the holiday season, you want to play with your kids or whatever. I could see that being a good game to to pull out. Family friendly title. But either way, looks great. I'm very, very pleased. Very excited for that one. Uh, So another one that was a surprise, similar vein, uh, was the Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, which. Looks really Which good. opened the show, right? Like, I yeah. was really surprised. And no one knew what it was because we've all been expecting Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, which we didn't report on it, but a couple of weeks ago, Ubisoft put an FAQ up. It's been re- the development's restarted again, it's in pre production. So I think people were like, what? There's a Prince of Persia game? Like, I thought they were kind of going through this struggled development. It's something totally new, something totally fresh. And I really think this looks like they've taken inspiration from metroid dread in the way that it changes perspective do you remember when you would like find an emmy and like you would you it would go into that like 3d on the side profile yeah but it takes that to the next level with the action where you're going along in a 2d side scroll in um uh, a kind of action but it changes camera angle and and changes the way the actions portray yeah like it really like makes zooms it a lot in. more dynamic it zooms in for like special attacks and like counters. And then like, there's like a scene with a monster where there's like the boss battle and it's a cut scene. And then it 
kind of like zooms out into the camera. It's very interesting, like very, very cool dynamic style. I really like the art for the character designs and like the cutscenes. Uh, it has like kind of a more stylized, like cartoony kind of look to it. Um, I mean, I'd be totally fine with this for Sands of Time, to be honest. This no, I, I think this would be the right move. You know, like differentiate it from Assassin's Creed. Yeah, and it, and it needs that. I think go with yeah. I I think they 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 got this spot, and I'm looking forward to seeing more. This is going to be a, again shown. I would imagine at the Ubisoft. They uh, said they they said they would. Week. Yeah, that yeah, also so makes we'll, me interested we'll is more. if they will have other things to show at that event that they haven't announced because this was not announced until now. No, they said that. So there we know that we're going. They're going to show the crew, Assassin's Creed, and I think a couple of other things they've spoken about. Obviously, now we know Prince of Persia's there. I would, I would guess we're going to get a few surprises then. Hope so. Um, so that's probably going to be one, to, one to tune in for. But the, we got a, a solid release date on it as well, January January eighteenth, twenty twenty four. It's awesome. I gr- gr- honestly, I think this is the best game reveal from Ubisoft in a really long time. Where I'm like, this looks like a game I am excited to play. I don't think I felt that since Far Cry Six, and that was a big disappointment for us both. Yeah, you know, the problem with every Ubisoft game though is I know in a month it'll be half price. So no, I never buy them at launch. I always mm. wait. I, they just they they do not know how to keep the value of their games in the same way that someone like Nintendo does. Because they mean, no, nobody does sale. though, right? No, nobody is yeah. as good at that as Nintendo is, frankly. Uh, so this is an interesting one because, like, I think it's a it's one of the bigger announcements of the show, but it it's like was kind of just like a side thing. Um as well and that's the reveal of spider-man 2's release date finally which is very cool uh coming in october it was what october 20th yeah october 20th and we saw a few other things as well like they did show off the the box art some more artwork from the the game and like some some kind of screenshots of the game so we can get a bit more of a glimpse and the interview was interesting i think it's worth uh worth listening to um, with yeah, Jeff they had Brian Antar, who's the creative yeah, director Brian, over there, yeah. come over and uh, and he said some stuff that he's kind of said in other interviews here or there. But I think this is the most visible place he's cl- uh, they've confirmed that the map is twice as big um, this time around, like yeah. adding more parts of the city, which is really cool. Yeah, I think I think uh, the more I see this game, the more excited I get. Every single time I see uh, Spider Man in the Venom suit and like the way he moves and the way that yeah. that suit is like a living, breathing thing, I just think it looks so cool. They also, uh, and I'm glad, I'm glad it's coming out in October. Really, really glad. It's yeah, that's out a in really October. good. I was worried it was going to gonna be September, and I'm really happy that it won't be right on top of. Because I think even if like I'm really into Starfield, I could take a break and come back to it. You know. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the kind of game you. I mean, Spider Man's the kind of game you can go away from, finish the main story, and then can come back and chip away at it if you want to. Uh, so Did I you know your boy's gonna be... platinum it, Steve? I've platinum that game. Of course twice. you are. Yeah, of course. <laughs> eighteen, I mean, twenty eighteen, <laughs> I platinum it twice. Um, I yeah, I mean, I'm I'm obviously very excited for this game. It, I think it looks fantastic. I think the original was, you know. Um, it's a great game on its face, but for a you know a Spider-Man fan like me, like it was just such a um, such a rewarding experience for sure. And I'm just excited to see them get a second at bat and with a little more experience under their belt between the DLC and Miles and all the feedback they've gotten. I feel like this game is really going to hit, you know. Yeah, and they spoke a bit more about like uh, Venom, right? And that he's he's not Eddie Brock in the game; he's gonna yeah. be someone else. Yeah, Jeff asked if if they would confirm the identity of Venom. Is it Eddie Brock? Is it is it Harry Osborn? Uh, Brian would not confirm who it was, but he did confirm it was not Eddie Brock. Which you and I talked about this after the ten minutes of footage. There is a scene at the end of 2018 that very much seems to imply that it's Harry who has the symbiote. So I'm very, very interested to see how that plays out. Is it like the game starts and Harry has the symbiote and then Peter ends up with it and then that's how it all kicks off? Like, I, and, you know, or is that going to be like a thing later where like Peter gets it and then he loses it and Harry gets it? And, you know, because we, we saw that Norman was working on it, right, in, in the, at the end of the first game. So it's like, 
it's interesting to try to connect those dots and, and see where it's going to go and how it's going to play out. Cause I think there's a couple different ways it could go. And I'm almost wondering if my kind of like loose theory right now is that Norman's using the symbiote to try to heal Harry. Peter will indirectly get involved in that and end up with the symbiote. And then like maybe Harry get sick and dies or something. And then that's what sets up Norman to become the green goblin for the, the third game. And like, that's, you know, maybe the third game is like a real hardcore, like we're going to do the sinister six thing and we'll bring in all the villains that we've established and they take over the whole city. And there's like, you know, this character owns Queens, this character owns Brooklyn, whatever. And then you're kind of going and taking them all out or something like that. Um, it just feels like that makes sense. So I'm wondering if that's where we're going to go with it, but, um, him yeah, saying... like he, well, he he made one other interesting comment, which was um, talking about Spider Man and the other Marvel characters that live in New York City as well. And I wonder if that means that we're going to see some other Marvel characters introduced that we're not necessarily um, sure on. I think we might, because I'm wondering. I think there's two ways you can interpret that. Because in the first tr the ten minutes of gameplay that we saw at the PlayStation Showcase when Craven was looking at the map of New York that his like crony gave him, it was showing a bunch of the villain characters. So you could take that at face value of like Peter miles and all the other superhumans that are in New York. And it's like, yeah, all the people that we fought, right. That makes sense. However, in the first game, Avengers tower makes an appearance. Dr. Strange's uh, sanctum makes an appearance. Obviously, there's a Wolverine game in development. The X-Men live in New York, uh, outside the city. So, like, there is confirmation that all those characters exist in this world and, like, are around. So, it's not impossible that we could get a cameo from another character that's not, you know, quote-unquote Spider-Man character. I think it would be really cool to see a character like Daredevil or something like that. Somebody who is, like, their own hero that doesn't necessarily, like... um isn't like a spinoff from Spider-Man, but like they have a close relationship, you know? Um, they're, they operate in the same city. They're both more close to the ground type heroes that deal with like helping their neighborhood, not, you know, going and fighting aliens in space, right? Sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Like, I, I think that could be really cool. And the fact that they're expanding the boroughs and showing you more of the city is only a better reason to introduce more of those characters. Like if you do go do a mission in hell's kitchen and you happen to get to team up with daredevil, that would be really hype. You know, if you are like in, um, so that's like the confirmation that, um, Gordon Ramsay is going to be here. Then yeah, if we're going to hell's kitchen, right. <laughs> Somebody He's give me a Marvel drawing character. of Gordon Ramsay as daredevil, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that yeah so i mean you know uh, it's it's an interesting one because as much as i'm very confident that like tears of the kingdom is the game of the year i might be more excited excited for spider-man just because i just fucking love spider-man yeah which is the same as me with with diablo right like i know tears of the kingdom is the game of the year but like i'm over the moon for diablo because the last diablo was diablo 3 and it came out like 2012 you know, yeah, like... literally 10 years ago. <laughs> like, yeah. Hard so not I'm, I'm to really get excited. excited. Well, yeah. and it's like, I literally just saw uh, Across the Spider-Verse, too, and I'm like, oh, my God, that was so good. Yeah, like, you're ready for I'm, it, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for some Spider-Man Miles Morales action right now. Like, I, I, that's, I'm here for that. That sounds great. Yeah. There, there were a couple of other big announcements for me before we move on to the kind of smaller things. I think Nicolas Cage uh, was one of them. Uh, him becoming to Dead by Daylight in July uh, was just bizarre. That and was it's the... Nicolas Cage himself, not an, not a character he's played. It's Nicolas Cage. And he's playing uh, a survivor, which I thought was funny, because at first I was like, is he a murderer? Like, are they turning him into a monster? Because <laughs> you could kind of see it either way, right? Yeah, well, they, that's when you get John Travolta to be on the other side. They really should have done that. It would have been amazing. Just like, you know, Dead by Daylight face-off. That would have been so funny. But, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm i in an interesting place with Nicolas Cage these days because I 
used to be kind of like one of the folks who was like, I don't know if he's an idiot or a genius. I'm not sure. Right. Like, and then I saw the unbearable weight of massive talent and it completely went full circle. I'm like, no, Nick, Nicholas Cage is a true artist. He is a genius and I love him. So I'm, I was down. I was down for the appearance. You know, this is one of those celebrity cameos where I'm like, you know what? Actually, this is OK. <laughs> yeah, I, I love him. I think he's so great. I think he's so funny. He's like he, the fact that he's gone into the meme. He's like, yeah, sure. Let's just go for it. Why not? Uh, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I appreciate I, I he doesn't take himself to too him. seriously. You yeah, know, he like really he doesn't. He just like he's happy to do work, you know. And and he is like, yeah, people love how insane I am. I'm gonna be insane then. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, there's like there's very few uh, there's very few actors like I feel like Samuel Jackson's like that as well. He's just like, yeah, sure, I'll do that crappy movie about snakes on a plane, but then I'll also do something that's really good. Uh, I really don't care either way. It's gonna gonna pay for my beach house or whatever. Actors you know? act, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's like the, the it reminds me of that the the bit in uh, Shit's Creek with Moira when she does the uh, the crow movie and she's like, it's about oh, elevating gosh, yeah. what's on the page. <laughs> <laughs> the script is just a jumping off point, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I need to rewatch Shit's Creek. It's so good. I'm rewatching it right now, actually. <laughs> Um, um another another high profile one that I thought was pretty interesting was um John Carpenter's Toxic Commando is a new co-op FPS that they showed off and originally I was thinking oh this surely this is based on an IP but it looks like it might be an original IP. Yeah, it's totally fresh. It's a, it's a new it's a new uh thing from uh John Carpenter. So he's he's bringing his talent to video games again, I guess. Which is cool. Uh, you know? I mean, yeah. He's one of the great. I'm always up for hordes of zombies. It's always a good time. Yeah. Uh, very much did not appreciate the Bon Jovi in the background of our of our stream. That was a pain. But uh, <laughs> but also I hate Bon Jovi. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You really? There's not yeah, a single no. Bon Jovi song you like? No, I hate him. And first of all, I don't like his music. But second of all, as someone from New Jersey, I can say this: You're not a fucking cowboy. Stop singing about being a cowboy. You're from New Jersey. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, this game looks cool. I think this game looks like a lot of fun. Uh, this it's got a good style. It's you know if if you're into the like Left for Dead you know type like let's just mow down hordes of monsters and zombies and you know whatever like that's what I really fun. liked. Yeah, that's what I liked about um. Oh God. I forget it every time the one in the shopping mall and i've spoke about you it just you did this earlier yeah. it's um it's uh yeah. hold on hold on dead <laughs> no, rising you can't remember either. dead rising dead <laughs> rising yeah, not dead <laughs> island yeah dead <laughs> rising uh i loved that it was so fun um i think the the other big announcement for me was uh it wasn't really an announcement but it was extended gameplay it was alan wake 2 um, and we had that interview yeah. with the director, Sam Lake, where we found out that you can swap between these two characters, Alan Wake and, and I think it's Saga. And, um, and there's two different stories that are intertwining and are kind of taking place at the same time, which very much reminds me of Resident Evil 2. Uh, and they revealed the premise that Alan's been writing this story and has left pages around and and uh it's coming true. It's coming to come into life. And uh as they are investigating and looking for him, they find more pages of this story. And all of the stuff that he's been writing about is happening in the real world, is happening around them, which I think is such a cool framing device and a kind of cool premise for uh what they said was Remedy's first survival horror game, which I'm very excited to to play. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, I, I don't know, like I want to play it, but I'm a baby when it comes to horror games, but it looks really good. It looks really good. So I, I'm, I'm interested for sure. Yeah, it looks visually stunning. It's a cool story. It's from Remedy. You know, it's going to be polished to perfection. This is going to be a really, really good game. Uh, it's just, it's coming out in a very, very crowded year. Even in the even in the survival horror space, you know, we had Resident Evil 4 remake this year. Yeah. And and to go up against that and Dead Space remake in the same year is just insane. It's absolutely this this year is just ridiculous. 
uh, video game releases. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. Um, one of the other smaller ones that was appealing to me is um, Marvel Snap had a, a quick little showing, and they revealed their new Conquest mode. I got up to use the bathroom when this started, so I kind of missed the beginning of it, but I got caught up on what happened. And this is the their competitive ladder mode that, that people have been asking for for a long time, because right now um, every game of Marvel Snap is on the same ladder, so you're kind of punished for like playing. Like If you're a high-level player, you get punished for experimenting with new decks because if you make a new deck and it sucks, like you're going to lose rank, you know, and everything. So having the ability to have like kind of they they added casual like you can play with friends mode a while ago, which is great. Um, but this is nice to have another degree of it where like if you do want to try to ladder and be more serious, you can go and do this conquest mode. And if you do just want to play for fun, you want to use a deck that's like off meta or that like, you know, is a gimmick and it isn't very good, but it's fun to play. You can do that without being penalized, which is really. Yeah, I'm cool. from the ad, ad they showed. It's all about cows, right? That's what <laughs> I got from the advert. Yeah, that was an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm pleased about that. That's a that's a that's a really cool addition uh, for folks who are 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 longtime snap players like me. Yeah, I think those and probably Baldur's Gate 3 is the last big one for me. Uh, it was nice to see some more footage of that as that always. That game looks so good. It looks like it really Dragon does. Age so much, and I love it. I'm so excited. I wish it was yeah. coming out at any other time. but I'm, just, I'm, I'm very... not going to play it day one. I know I'm not. No, it's going to be. When it's coming out. I feel like that's going to be that game that I play in December, January, and then I'll be like, this was one of my game of the years. No! Yeah, but like, like... this would have been. Like, this would have made the list. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what you mean. I feel like that's going to happen. Yeah, that was that was uh, definitely a big one for me. There's a couple other I wanted to highlight. Um, we got our first, like, proper clip of the Twisted Metal show. There had been... Um, <laughs> yeah, with like, Will on that. <laughs> like, screenshots of it and stuff. But, yeah, we got to see Anthony Mackie, uh, who's playing uh, John Doe. He's, like, the main character. And then Will Arnett is the voice of Sweet Tooth, but the body actor is a different guy, um, which is interesting. It's, like, you know, kind of like a Darth Vader thing. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. When you see a clip of a comedy out of context, it's it's easy to be like, I don't know, like, I don't know what the vibe of this is. It seems very goofy and silly while also still having that slightly dark edge. That's Twisted Metal. So, I I hope it's good. I really do. I love Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal is an IP that I was so in love with as a kid. Twisted Metal 2, one of my favorite games on the PlayStation. And, like, even Twisted Metal Black, the one on PS2 where it was like, we're going to lean in and it's going to be grim, dark, and weird and creepy. Like, I I liked it. I did. I know it's not the most popular game, but I thought it was cool at the time. I would love to see them make Twisted Metal come back and actually have it be a marquee PlayStation IP again. Because it's so good, and I think a good free-to-play Twisted Metal game could really work. Yeah, no, I, I, I think they must be right they must be working on another one to to kind of be so, in line with the release of the video of the movie my the understanding movie is is that they have one in development but i think it had its development restarted because i'm pretty sure it was the team i can't remember their name but it was the team that did um oh god you gotta help me out what was the name of that that multiplayer game that came out right at launch on ps5 and it was like a total flop oh do you remember well, the game I'm talking about? It's like it was like a weird like sports. Full? No, no, no. It was like a sports kind of game. I oh, I can't remember the oh, name of it. Yeah. I oh, want to say Riders yeah. Republic, but that's not it. It's um, no. oh my god, what was it? Uh, 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 I I'm not gonna find this. No idea. But I Destruction All Stars. Destruction yeah. All Stars was the game. It was that team. Um, Lucid Games was was I believe working on it. And then I'm pretty sure Sony took it away from them because it had an internal review that did not go well. Oh. So I, I don't, it might be far off at this yeah. point, which is unfortunate because I, I think that would be really cool. I mean, they're now studio support for Sea of Thieves, apparently. So I guess uh, Sony weren't too happy with that. Mm -mm. Makes Fair sense. Enough. Uh, a couple other things. We got a new trailer for Like a Dragon, the man who erased his name. That's coming out on November 9th. I thought that looked really good. Um, you the I the <laughs> franchise formerly known as Yakuza, Like a Dragon. 
uh, is one that I I've can't never... wait till they just turn to a symbol, you know? We have <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just go for yeah, Prince. Yeah, known as Prince, and then we're just gonna have the symbol. Just own it. I feel like you could. Um, I, not a franchise I've ever gotten into. One I think I would like if I took the time. You, but you would like. It looks good. They're very, very fun. They have very fun games. Uh, and, uh, and and this oh, story looks really cool. Uh, I'm really looking. I, I actually, I really need to get back into these. And I know Zade's probably screaming. Yeah. Right now, going like, "Yes, you two need to play it. That should be the next game club." Uh, it's just, where do you start? Mm. There's so many of them. And then there's the judgment spin. I can mess around with that. I was though, having a good time a game with. Club. Yeah. But like it, like a dragon guide in the man who erased his name looked really good, and I loved the way that it ended. I thought that was so cold. Like the dude is like. It's like, what's your name? And he's like, I have no name. I was like, yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, yeah, you're the man with no name. <laughs> so good. Yeah, uh, that was fun. Another one that really stuck out to me was Yes, Your Grace Snowfall. That was that pixel, the very oh, yeah, like, simple pixel art, gorgeous. but with the great lighting yeah. and like the depth of field and everything. Really cool style. Um, Looks like it's like a very like, narrative choice based type experience you know you're like making decisions about the kingdom and it seems really cool really yeah. good look to it very very concerned about his potatoes which you know i can understand yes and then uh you mentioned this one earlier but party animals got a uh has a release date of september 20th i don't know if that was a new release date but this game looks really good i think it's going to be a lot of fun i love gang Beast it back does, in the day yeah day one for for game pass so it's probably worth checking out yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really yeah, really strange. Um, that it's just like we saw a bunch of people playing the game and it's not even out. Like it was a very weird way to to show it. Like we saw all these streamers playing the game, like Jack yeah. Jack, I was playing it, but no one else could play it right now. And then it's yeah, it's coming out later this year, which was uh, a, a weird choice. Um, I guess they're just they're trying to convey like it's fun to play with friends. You know, it's yeah. like a bunch of people playing together and they're laughing, and you know, it's like. It does look like a, it does look like a fun game. Uh, there was a couple of others for me as well, like Under the Waves, uh, which is one of the games published by Quantic Dream, uh, which that was that one of the guy like on the submarine underneath under the water. He's been like underwater for underwater three and a half years, years or something. Yeah. yeah, I thought that looked really good. Got an August 29th release date. Not the first time we've seen it, but uh, it was nice to see it again, um, which I thought looked cool. And there was one that we were just like really scratching our heads about. Uh, and Andy in the in the live stream chat kind of filled us in on it, which was that weird mobile Ever Crisis game, the mobile game for Final Fantasy VII, yeah. and there's like a closed beta. So and it's like the the long and short of it is, it is a shibby like in the style of the shibby like Final Fantasy XV that they did a while ago. It's the events of the original Final Fantasy VII as well as the supplemental stuff like Advent Children or whatever. And it's turned into like a chapter-based episodic adventure and you can do it in a different pace, if you, like your own pace. If you, it's, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, the combat is like very... Uh, it's like the original combat system. The like... Um, I forget what it's called. The active time or whatever battle system. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Like... That could be good. That could be a good thing as a companion piece, I think, in terms of like giving folks uh, a new way to experience the old story in a way that's maybe more digestible than going back and playing a PS1 game um, and, and giving you that context for the modern remake, you know, that has its own complementary yeah. story. Yeah, it's active time battles is, is what it's called. So uh, I just thought it was so I thought it was so strange strange that it looked like three games at the same time yeah they were I mean, showing I, in the trailer it was really confusing technically trailer. i think it, it it's the events of seven advent children which was the movie and then crisis core okay well that makes sense so why it looks like three separate things then because it um, straight up is <laughs> yeah yeah it was really i was so confused when i was watching i was like is this yeah. are they releasing three individual things because they was three individual was visual like, styles a- is this like a, another Final Fantasy game as well? Like, is this going to be like a trilogy or like whatever? And uh, Advent Children and Crisis yeah. Core things I have not engaged with either, so I don't I don't know those characters. Yeah, and the the final one I think, um, which really cemented the show for you, I know that you're really excited about this game coming in January 2024, is Power World, Pokemon with guns. You can't wait for it. I know it's they just re- keep really showing it. For it. <laughs> How is that game? How is it even legal? Like, it looks so like it's just 
everything that's it's not dumb. a Pokemon ripoff is like a is feels like a different ripoff. There's the one guy who looks like an electric my neighbor Totoro, but he has a gun. I'm just like, I don't like this at all. Yeah, it's really weird. Absolutely I think I would like game. it if it didn't have guns. Like <laughs> don't I don't want Or this. at least make like like friendly weapons, like um, Splatoon style, right? I don't want to be like shooting the... animals with bullets. Mm. Like it just feels weird. I don't like it. I mean, I, yeah, I did enough of that in The Last of Us Part Two for a lifetime. <laughs> God, the number of dogs I killed in that game is traumatic. <laughs> the last one I wanted to highlight uh, was the trailer we got for Sandland, which is uh, a game adapted from a like limited series manga that Akira Toriyama, who, if you don't know by name, is the the creator of uh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and then also the the artist. And I I I don't know if he's considered the co creator, but he's the art director of um of uh, Dragon Quest and Dragon Warrior, right? So this is very much in that style, you know, and it's uh it's taking that that I guess cult series and and bringing it to uh to games and i mean it looks it looks beautiful you know i mean i don't necessarily have a great idea of like what the moment to moment gameplay is it seems like it's like an open world game you're exploring a desert you're exploring some mines um but you know the whole basic premise they've like it set up is that this is a world where demons exist and they walk among humans and there's this mix of the kind of like old school like retro future tech that you know from Toriyama's work mixed with magic and and demons and stuff and i mean it just looks cool it's got a great vibe it's got a great style i mean obviously akira toriyama one of the most storied creators and of our time you know like obviously one of you know dragon ball one of the most recognizable ip in the world and i mean Dragon Quest is no slouch in that conversation either. So, this is really cool. You know, I think if it comes together, if it if it uh, if it delivers, one to look out for. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we wrap up, uh, I know we've got the Xbox event on Sunday. Uh, Atlas screwed up. Pete, Persona Three Reload and Persona Five Tactics have been accidentally announced on their Instagram. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, Steve! Yeah! All right, baby. I mean, you know, you don't love you don't love them getting spoiled, but great news. So yeah, that's uh that's coming. Yeah. So it's, it's all over our Discord if you want to f- see the reveals before Sunday. <laughs> so come check that out. And if you don't, hey, we'll we'll have them here on Sunday for you. Uh, so just a reminder, if you're just joining us, if you missed the live stream today, um if you're just checking this out, you know, to catch up, uh, we are going to be live again on Sunday for the Xbox Showcase, the Xbox uh, Starfield Showcase. And what we'll, how, how it will break out is we're going to jump on 30 minutes prior to the show. We'll do a little pre-show. We'll chat with you, the viewers. We'll go live. We'll all watch together. And then Steve and I will jump off and we'll do an episode like this yet again. So um, come hang out. Come watch the event live with us. Come be in the chat. And uh, if you can't, if you missed today's live stream, guess what? VOD's already up on YouTube for you. So go check it out and make sure you uh, keep it tuned because we're going to be covering all the Summer Games Fest stuff as we go here. And then on uh, Tuesday, we'll have uh, an episode of the Flip Screen Games podcast that'll come out. And we'll probably do a bit of a roundup for all the other events that happened. It was like Day of the Devs happened while we were recording this. So we got to check that out. You know, we got... Um, a couple other ones on the docket like Capcom and Ubisoft and some other stuff to look forward and to. And there's some so. stuff at the PC game and showcase that and then you were talking with Wakahula about over on Discord as well. Yeah. Be sharing there, so. Yeah, so we'll we'll definitely catch up on all that stuff. Um and you know, if if time allows and we are going to do another live stream for another one, we'll of course let you know ASAP. But for right now, the only other live event we have planned is on Sunday and uh we'll play it by here from there. But uh maybe maybe we'll be live on Monday with some Ubisoft or Capcom stuff as well. So keep it tuned to the Discord and the social media and everything. We'll keep you in the loop. We'll keep you posted. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Flip Screen Games podcast. Thank you if you tuned into our live stream. Thank you for everybody who came and hung out and spent the day with us. I hope you are enjoying the Summer Game Fest G3 season as much as we are. And of course, we will see you on Sunday. For the crew, I've been Pete. He's been Steve. 
Take it easy, baby.